Welcome. This question says, using the method of Gauss's law that was shown in class, determine the electric field two meters from the center of a four meter radius nine coulomb ball of positive charge. So let's visualize this. We have a ball of positive charge. So let's draw our ball of positive charge. And I'm going to call that radius A. And I know, you know down here A is equal to 4 meters. And my point of interest, my point of interest I'm going to just put here. Oops a daisy. Mm. My point of interest is halfway along. Let's get a decent drawing here. And that's my point of interest. And I want to find the electric field at that point. And that is uh, three meters, two meters away. And how to do this? T two meters from the center. And how to do this? Well, I'm going to use the Gaussian surface. So I'm going to imagine drawing a Gaussian surface. And again, because I've kind of done this before, I know that the best Gaussian surface for this is one which is highly symmetrical. So I'm going to have the center of my Gaussian surface be coincident with the center of the ball of charge. Because that do, what that does for me is it means that the electric field on every point on that Gaussian surface, even though it's inside the ball of charge, because of symmetry, is still a constant value. And it also means that for every window on my Gaussian surface, even though it's inside the ball of charge, my dA is parallel to my electric field. And I know I'm going to put this down. I know that this value here, this radius here, to the Gaussian surface, I'm going to call R. And I know that R is equal to 2 meters. Uh, what else can I write down? I know that uh, Q is the total amount of charge. Q is going to be 9 coulombs. That might do me for a minute. So let's do our Gaussian, Gauss's law. So my flux is equal to the integral of uh, electric field dotted with dA, a little bit of the area, which equals Q inside over epsilon naught. And I'd like to simplify that, and because I picked a, a nicely symmetrical Gaussian surface, I can say E is constant on the Gaussian surface. And I can also say E is parallel to dA on Gaussian surface. And just by the by, these are all vectors. Those two in particular are vectors, which is important because what they say is when E is parallel to dA, my dot product, which would be E times dA times the cosine of the angle between, well, the cosine of zero is one, so it simplifies my math. Those two together enable me to justify saying E uh, flux is equal to E simply times the integral of dA which equals Q inside over epsilon naught. And my integral of dA is equal to, well, it's still a, a sphere, surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. So I can say, well, E times 4 pi r squared is equal to Q inside over epsilon naught. I want to find E. So I can say E is equal to Q inside over 4 pi r squared times epsilon naught. And I remember that Ke is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. 
So this means that E is equal to KE times Q inside over R squared. And that's my very standard, very standard answer. So what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that Q inside is not Q. When the point of interest is outside the ball of charge, then the Q inside is everything. It's, it's Q. It's the total amount of charge in the ball. But when we're inside the Gaussian surface, then Q inside is not equal to Q. So what is Q inside? Well, Q inside would equal Q multiplied by the ratio of the volume inside over the total volume. If you think about it, if, if this is half the volume of the whole thing, it's got half the charge. If this Gaussian surface encloses a third of the volume of the charge, then I have a third of Q, and so on. And, well, this is going to be Q times four thirds pi. Now the volume inside has a radius of R, R cubed, over four thirds pi, and the volume of my ball of charge is A, so that's A cubed. So this is Q times R cubed over A cubed. So this equals Ke. Sorry, that's R cubed disappeared. Ke Q R cubed over A cubed. And don't forget the R squared from down there. So E is equal to Ke. Q R over A cubed. And leaving K E as K E, that would be nine times R. R is two over A cubed. That's four cubed. I need to, I'm sorry, I need to make sure I don't get things confused. So E equals, uh, let's have a look, 18 over, um, 18 over 56, is that right? So let's go, that's going to be uh, 18 divided by bracket uh, 4 carat 3. Okay, that's going to be um, that is going to be so this is going to be zero point two eight k e newtons per coulomb. There we have it. So I don't know how you feel about that. Sometimes when questions are posed in terms of letters and you get a, a an answer like this it seems quite daunting because it's got nothing but letters in it but actually it's it's not so bad and putting numbers in is just putting numbers in by the way just before i i go if i was to plot a graph of well let's let's do it better let's erase some of this Oh, didn't mean to erase that. <laughs> Let's put that back. So I'm going to put my that guy back. If I plot a graph of my electric field versus position, if you look at this, this is well, 
is a constant, so it's R that I'm changing. And it goes, E goes linearly with R. So up to that point there, E goes linear with R. And if I'm outside the sphere, that's the form that, that matters. And you see it's a 1 over R squared. So it falls off like that. So this is the surface of the charge. So my electric field increases steadily from 0 to its maximum value at the surface of the charge. And then it falls off. You're following an inverse square law. So very interesting stuff. Once again, if I ask for using the method of Gauss's law as shown in class, I want to see all this. I want to see a good diagram. I want to see Gauss's law. I want to see good justification for simplifying the math. I want to see appropriate substitutions. And then in this particular example, I want to see an evaluation of Q inside based on the volume inside the Gaussian surface compared with the total volume of the charge. So there we have it.